in the news you you hear about all these kind of hacks like over a hundred million dollars was um, transferred out maliciously over 350 transactions or so and in in the web 2 world that just wouldn't be allowed to happen like your bank would flag it your credit card company would flag it in web 3 that's something that's missing and that i really feel like i can i can help solve i'm ann stefan co-founder and coo at cubis My founder journey started when I moved to Silicon Valley about 10 years ago, and I, I worked at a variety of startups at different stages. I started as a product manager, um, and then I spent uh, many years at a fintech company in an operations role. And one of the things um, at the fintech company that I learned very quickly was that in order to have a sustainable business, we had to take fraud operations very seriously. If we were losing too much money due to fraud, we could get kicked off of credit card networks. Um, we, the company was financially responsible for paying the cost of chargebacks. And so really, I built up a robust operation, both from a, a personnel perspective, but also from an automation perspective. My three co-founders are all academics um, in the computer security space. And they had been talking for some time about, uh, you know, different security problems that they could solve in Web3, seeing all these hacks that kept happening that could have been prevented by, you know, really basic uh, fraud monitoring, like the type that I was doing at the fintech in Web2, really saw where we could combine their expertise in security with my background in fraud operations to figure out how, how can we really make an impact. At Cubis, we're building a hardware-backed key management solution that allows teams to get good performance and usability without having to cut security corners. One of the first things that, uh, that I did after we started Cubist was to go out and talk to Web3 developers to show that like the problem that we originally set out to solve is not actually the security problem that we're working on now. The, really the key here was, was to keep these questions really high level and open-ended to make sure that I, in, you know, I wasn't driving them towards a specific solution instead. Um, you know, really just use these conversations as an opportunity for them to tell me a story, to share their experience that really made us realize that managing private keys is what was keeping people up at night. We've, we've talked to teams that are doing things like storing their private keys on laptops. Um, you know, teams are building applications that handle keys in the web browser. You know, they're doing things that are forcing their end users to have to copy paste keys or store seed phrases in uh, cloud drives, just things that really aren't safe. In Web3 right now, you see a lot of teams using complex cryptography and, you know, technologies that are less mature. And we've really taken a step back from a, a secure systems perspective and the expertise that my co-founders have to take a much more simple approach um, using hardware, you know, which is just something that, you know, banks and, you know, other high security applications have used for years. To the developer, it looks like an API endpoint. The thing that's unique about it is that the entire life cycle of the key is inside the hardware from generation to storage to even transaction signing. It all happens inside the hardware. On top of that, there's a policy engine that allows you to specify um, usage policies about each specific key. So you can say things like uh, for large transactions, you know, a second factor is required for certain types of transactions. Maybe multiple people are required to authorize it with a UV key. And we've also even thought about, um, you know, the export story. Okay, because of this, the simple hardware based approach that we're using, signing latency is much lower than what um, other key management solutions are able to get um, because they're using more complex cryptography. You know, what this enables is for teams to build applications that are much more user-friendly. So rather than waiting 
multiple seconds to generate a wallet or sign a transaction or to mint an NFT, our solution is able to do this in milliseconds. And it's able to, you know, enable secure, you know, trading. We can secure validators, like really these, many of these uh, use cases that are much more reliant on good performance and reliability. This is the, the unique angle that we're taking with our solution. And that will really enable applications that are much more friendly to people who are used to operating in Web2. At Cubis, we've started seeing a lot of um, Web2 companies starting to explore Web3 to enable loyalty programs or to organize their data to really like solve problems they weren't able to solve before. And so this is one thing that I'm really excited about is to see real life use cases emerge. Uh, that start to cross over into the mainstream. In April 2023, we launched uh, our key management solution for validators, uh, which was uh, you know, a really deliberate choice for our first use case because validators require um, high performance and high reliability. This allowed us to make sure that we would be able to serve any use case that we wanted to serve in the future without having to completely re-engineer our solution. More recently, uh, we've released a wallet as a service, which is allowing us to use the same core technology to serve a variety of other use cases to provide secure key management for people who are building loyalty programs and end user wallets, um, people who are building custodial solutions and trading platforms. You know, I'm really excited to build out each of these verticals um, to get more case studies, to get more logos, and to really scale the company. Protocol Labs is one of our seed investors. We've really loved being part of their portfolio. Not only do they have a huge network of portfolio companies that we've been able to get to know and network with, but uh, Protocol Labs also pro has provided a lot of services for us, you know, such as recruiting at a cost-effective rate that has filled some really critical gaps before our company was ready to hire for these full-time roles. We're really thankful to be part of the Protocol Labs network and always recommend Protocol Labs to our founder friends. My top advice for founders is to go out and talk to potential customers to understand their pain points, but without telling them what it is that you're building. People often think of pivoting as a bad thing, but I don't necessarily think that's true. Um, because if you're you're listening to what it is that's keeping people up at night, you can be sure that you're solving a problem that's worth solving. I think right now a lot of a lot of people in Web two, I've heard them say that they're scared to try Web three. They're scared to try crypto. It's confusing. It's hard. You can't ask your parents to manage a seed phrase. And so I think this is this is one thing that I'm really excited about solving. You're really eliminating this trade off that teams have to make today between security and usability.